Senior Plasma Physics Lecture 15. We're going to examine the hydrodynamics of magnetized plasmas, which is commonly known as magnetohydrodynamics or MHD for short. The term MHD implies that we are dealing with low frequency interactions of the plasma with the magnetic field. We've already seen one example of this in a previous lecture, which is the alphane wave. MHD is mostly useful in space plasmas and in magnetically confined plasmas used in nuclear fusion research. We're going to examine a couple of basic MHD concepts. First we'll look at what we mean by ideal MHD, then we'll discuss magnetic pressure, finally we'll look at MHD stability or rather instability. Ideal MHD Recall that Ohm's law for a normal conductor can be written like this, where E is the electric field strength, eta is the resistivity, and J is the current density. It can be shown that if there is a magnetic field also applied, that a generalized Ohm's law can be written like this. This could be derived from the fluid equations. Under some circumstances, we want to regard the plasma as essentially collisionless. So we say that there is no resistivity, and we write the so-called ideal MHD equation, given by this. Let's now derive an expression for the pressure applied on a plasma by a magnetic field. Recall the momentum equation from the fluid model of a plasma, given by this. In the steady state, where the drift velocity u is constant, we can let the derivative be zero. That means the right-hand side of the momentum equation can be written as follows. The left-hand side is the familiar Lorentz force term without an electric field in this case, and it's equal to the force due to the plasma pressure gradient. Now let's substitute into it this Maxwell equation. We replace J by the Maxwell equation and rearrange, and we end up with this. Now the two cross products can be simplified to this term. This is obtained from vector identities that you can find in any vector calculus book. Let's rearrange this equation as follows. What you'll notice is P, the plasma pressure term, that is the pressure applied by the particles in the plasma, and this term is also a pressure term. It's the pressure applied by the magnetic field on the plasma. If we assume we have a situation where the magnetic field B does not change in its own direction, so that is its gradient is zero, then we can set the right-hand term to zero. What this says is that for the left-hand side to equal to zero, that means the expression in brackets must be a constant. So we define a parameter beta, which is the ratio of the particle pressure to the magnetic pressure, given mathematically by this. The pressure in the plasma is caused by all species. For example, the electrons would cause a pressure and so would the ions. So P is really the sum of all particle pressures. We can rewrite this equation as follows, where we've used the ideal gas law P equals NKT for each species of the plasma. In fusion plasma research where tokamaks are used, beta must be less than 1 for the reason that the magnetic field must confine the plasma. That means the magnetic field pressure on the particles must be greater than the particle pressure. So the denominator in the beta must be greater than the numerator, that is, beta has to be less than 1. Another application of magnetic pressure is in plasma stability. Imagine we have a cylindrical plasma, and just ever so momentarily, a part of it is reduced in size. It just wobbles a little bit and is reduced in size, as shown there. Now, it so happens that the azimuthal magnetic field, that is the magnetic field along the theta direction, which is shown by the circular arrows there, is inversely proportional to the radius. So if the plasma radius is reduced, you'll have an increase in the azimuthal magnetic field. Now, from what we've just seen, the pressure on the plasma from the magnetic field is proportional to B squared. So an increase in the azimuthal magnetic field causes a greater pressure on the plasma, which has the effect of squeezing it down even narrower, which has the effect of increasing the field further, and so on. 
in a kind of a positive feedback system which clearly is not sustainable, at some point the plasma will spring back in trying to maintain its original size, but it could overshoot and the whole process repeats again in some other part of the plasma. This is called a plasma instability and it can oscillate quite wildly and is generally not regarded as beneficial to fusion plasmas because it has the effect of throwing particles out from the plasma. For almost obvious reasons, this is called a sausage instability. The magnetic pressure can also be applied to another instability. Imagine now that the cylindrical plasma doesn't pinch in on itself as in the previous diagram, but just bends. The magnetic field lines on the inside of the bend are closer together. That means the magnetic field there is higher than the outside. If the magnetic field is higher than the outside, then that means there is more magnetic pressure there, which reduces the radius of the bend, which produces a larger magnetic field. And so the process continues until the bend becomes quite severe and the plasma tries to spring back and the whole process repeats in another part of the plasma. This is called a kink instability and is also regarded as not very beneficial to fusion plasmas. There is quite an assortment of instabilities that one can study, but these two are the most well known and it would suffice to make the point of how magnetic pressure can contribute to instabilities.